All right, I have a uh, Lister and Petter LW2 motor uh, that was being scrapped. That's out of an MEP802 Alpha generator. And since I had it and I was messing around with it, what I wanted to talk about, because I ran into this issue and I saw a lot of other people had this issue, and it can be an absolute nightmare if you don't understand it, is if you remove one or both of your injection pumps and lining them up properly with the rail on the inside. So I'm going to show you the rail on the inside. This is already loose. And for some perspective on here, if you can't tell, this is where your oil filter would be and your radiator and fan would be on this side and that's where the shroud goes off to the generator head. Yeah. Stored really nice. But anyway, this is the fuel rail right here. You can see this is your throttle. And then this is where the solenoids attach to to cut uh, your, your fuel. So when you go to shut it off. And it's, it's real nasty in there and it's going to be hard. But this rail goes all the way down to each pump. And this is what controls the fuel in the injection pump. You can see this moves. And that spring is tapped by the cam on the inside of the motor, and when it pushes up, it squeezes high pressure fuel out the top. That's where the fuel comes in. Looking in here, you can see that's the little tap it, and then you'll see the rail coming back and forth. And that little notch is where this tab on the injection pump goes in. So it gets messed up a lot on these by people not knowing what they're doing and kind of diving in without reading the technical manual is they'll rip both of them out and they don't know the procedure to get the pumps back in. I don't remember the exact procedure in the TM, but this is kind of how I've realized you could do it. I remember the TM says something about taking this I believe you move it all the way this way and then you're supposed to like tie it off over here so it won't move. And the reason being is then if you look inside there, the little slot in the rail, I'm moving it just so you can see what I'm talking about, lines up perfectly with that hole. So that way when you go to put your injection pump in there, it's going to go in properly. The problem you might be having if you took both of them out would be this being in there and say you go to start the generator and the generator will start and it'll either have like a really low or a really high RPM or depending on where these are on either one, um, it, it may not start if, if this is trying to pull back. It, it's not going to run right or it'll scream you'll go to shut it off and it won't shut off until say like 30 seconds afterward because you're having what you're having like a runaway engine basically because you have no control over the fuel coming out of the pump to shut it off because that that's what that bar does <clears throat> and what could happen if you're just kind of messing around with this and you don't have it in the right spot is if you go to push it in you can hit that rail right there and bend it putting it in or if you wrestle the injector out you'll bend that rail and it might not necessarily work right after you bend it um, I've heard some people what they did after they realized it was bent when they got their machine they were able to kind of get a tool in the top and push down on it and and free it up because this moves very freely in there okay it's gonna be hard to show but anyway, so I'm not going to tie it off for instructional purposes only. And mind knew that you're supposed to have some shims and stuff in here. But this will only go one way. And this ends up covering up that hole. So this will be tied off or you hold it. Your incoming fuel needs to go between there. So you can kind of get it started, get it in place. Kind of the way where it's supposed to. It's not easy to get it in here fight you quite a bit. 
then holding it over make sure that the little tab or whatever you want to call it is all the way over to the left and work its way in and see my, that went right in. You might need to wiggle it back and forth. Now until it's clamped down, you're not gonna be able to move it. But you can push down on it and you'll see that because I wasn't holding this, it let, it let loose. This will move freely, it won't be bound. It'll, it'll move this full range of motion if you have it in there right, the right way. And then you're gonna do the same thing. Once you have one in there, it kinda holds the, the fuel rail in place once the spring tension comes up but you'd go ahead and put your second one in now you also need to do this to get the eject injectors out okay so <clears throat> let's say this is how it's sitting uh, in it and you're clamping it and you're getting a little bit of movement but it's stuck well the reason why it's stuck is that little tab is all the way over here and it can't come up it has that little hole so same thing you're trying to take it out you're gonna bring it over you'll actually feel this pop up and then it'll just slide out I really hope this is making sense I'm trying my best to explain it a lot of people had shared pictures about this process and even looking at drawings and stuff like that it's very hard to understand it but I was hoping this would be helpful to other people that get these generators and uh, <clears throat> are trying to troubleshoot them and fix them and stuff like that. Uh, maybe even being able to see. And if you have an MEP803 Alpha, that's four cylinders with the LPW4, it's the same idea, you're just doing it with all four cylinders. You can kind of see, this is the whole governor setup it was all it's actually not as bad as it looks a lot of this will clean up this motor probably would have run if I wanted to spend some time with it but anyway now if you had this cover off this will pop off but you can see that's what will shut your fuel off and then this is your throttle I'll do my absolute best to show this but camera probably will not focus on what I want it to but down in there past that you can kind of see it really out of focus in there there's like a, a little recessed thing and then your black uh, linkage to the fuel pumps which are not in the holes right now are coming all the way back and that is this piece right here that moves back and forth okay it's possible that could get bent and it won't work it'll bind up really bad going in and out it will uh, pop it in there it acts as a guide on that side and then the guide on this side it's almost focusing on it nope this is such a terrible video. But it can also bend and not guide properly uh, here where it goes through the throttle governor linkage. So there's a lot of stuff that can get bent and damaged. It's, uh, it's critical. See, there's kind of a lot going on in there. But once you understand it, it is relatively simple. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. I know it made me understand it more now that I got this to rip apart.